I give a lot of advice on this channel about how to move up in your executive career journey. One of the most important pieces of advice that I give is that you need to build deep relationships with people in your network, not just that you work with, but with people that are in your industry and that know other people in your industry as well. It's hard to build deep relationships online. It's easier to build them in person. I'm gonna give you three tips on how you can do that both in person and online as well with the goal of building a relationship that's so deep that they advocate for you when they see an opportunity that fits your needs. My name is Tom and I'm the founder of Vertical Motion where we help mid-career professionals become executives. We also help executives move to the next level in their career. If that's interesting to you, then there's a link down below that describes the program or you can reach out to me on Instagram at Tom Cox VM. We can have a conversation about your executive career journey. But today what we're talking about is how to build deep relationships with people that can help your career. Now, all of the advice that I give you today works both for in-person and remote Zoom or Teams type WebEx environments. Generally, this is going to always work better in person than it will remotely. But in some cases, now we work in an era where some people will never meet their colleagues in person. They'll just see them on Zoom. And so a lot of this is actually going to work for that environment as well, just maybe not as well as if it was in person. But take the advice from either perspective. So the first tip for developing developing deep relationships with other people is to look them in the eye. Make them feel like they are the only person in the room. Keep your eye contact on them. Stay focused on them. Ignore things that are happening around you. Ignore other people going by. Ignore other noises or sounds or visions that you see. Just focus solely on the person you're communicating with. That direct eye contact that doesn't waver is going to make them feel like they're the only person in the world as far as you're concerned. So you want to ignore everything else, look them in the eye and practice active listening where you are actually listening to what they have to say, not to respond to them, but to hear and absorb what they're saying to you. That active listening, that full attention is going to make them feel a deeper connection to you. Some of the people who do this extremely well are former presidents. I have some friends who used to work at White House Communications Agency. They would tell me stories about Presidents Clinton, Bush and Obama and how those presidents were amazing at giving someone full attention, undivided attention, even if it was someone who was just on the staff and working had nothing to do with policy or global politics. It was just somebody who was happened to be working in the building. The presidents would give those people undivided time and attention when they were talking with them. And the president was focused on them and listening to them actively. And it was really powerful for them. They remember this about these presidents. So think about the level of executive presence that a president needs to have. And they're focusing all of their energy and attention on just one person who happens to be working in the same building. It's pretty powerful. The second tip is to remember everything about them. And I suggest that you include this information in their contact card. So I'm talking about things like their birth date, their anniversary date, their start date at the company that you're working together at. Their name, of course, please do remember their name because that sucks when you someone says their name and you have no idea what they just said. So remember remember their name, but also remember their family members' names. What are their kids' names, their spouse's name, right? So have that information. You can include that in a contact card for people. I find that to be useful when you're talking with someone you haven't talked to in maybe like seven, eight years. Like, what was his wife's name? Oh yeah, it was Kelly. So remember these details about people. People really appreciate that. For example, you can put calendar items on your calendar to wish someone a happy anniversary. And if you do that, like not going to Facebook and doing it, but just just like send them a text on their own, that's gonna be really powerful. People are going to appreciate that. I love getting birthday notes from people I haven't talked to in 17 years. It's really powerful when they do that. So remember as much about that person as you can and they will really appreciate that. If you think about it, we all love our own story. We know our own story extremely well and we want other people to know our story too. And when you acknowledge and recognize someone's important milestones and their stories and the people that are important to them, that makes them feel a deeper connection to you. Like you believe in them, you understand them, you like them, all of that. And they're going to reciprocate that energy usually. And the third way to build deep connections with people is to be an advocate for them. Stand up for them when you hear them being disparaged or badmouth, or if someone is 
questioning whether they're the right person for something, be an advocate for them and then turn around and help them be aware of challenges that they may not realize that they're facing in the work environment. Also, you want to offer to make connections for them. If you're growing your network, you shouldn't hog the network just for yourself. You can also connect other people and connecting to people who know you from different aspects of your life makes your network between those two people stronger. So be willing to connect other people to someone that you're trying to be an advocate for. And finally, I like to use an analogy that Gary Vaynerchuk says a lot, which is he says, jab, 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 right hook. Well, offer, 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 and then ask. You want to build up goodwill with people by offering things to them, offering help, offering suggestions, offering time, offering your thoughts, offering whatever you can, connections and other things, opportunities, right? So continuously offer things to people that are in your network and then only ask them for something in return when you really need it. And that way you've built up more goodwill than you need when the time comes for you to ask for their help in return. I find this to be incredibly powerful. If you do this well, you'll have people wanting to have an opportunity to repay those favors to you. And that's why I'm so giving. When people ask me for my time or my energy or my thoughts or my network, I'm usually glad to give that over, even if it's kind of detrimental to me, because I know that the net benefit to me long term is that I'll have people that I can reach out to when I'm in crisis or I have situations that are difficult. And this was born out when I was sick with leukemia. When I went ill, I was the sole breadwinner for our family. And I was very nervous about what was going to happen to my family if I didn't survive. And I had dozens of friends reach out to me telling me, we'll make sure everything works out okay for your wife and children. And that meant a tremendous amount. I'm going to get choked up if I think about it too much. But having deep relationships with dozens and hundreds of people led to an amazing outpouring of support over that period of time when I was in the hospital. But more importantly, it gave people a chance to pay back the goodwill that I had been storing up in people for decades. And seeing that just made that much more powerful for me. So I continue to give more than I receive, knowing at some point I'll be able to tap into that. Lastly, I'll just say this about being in a 100% remote work environment. It is much more difficult to build deep relationships with people virtually than it is to do that in person, but not impossible. And I've learned this through a year's worth of coaching that I've been doing with dozens of clients whom I've never met in person, but have very deep relationships ships with them now virtually. I consider some of my clients to now be among my friends. So I've built very deep relationships with people that I've never met in person. It's really powerful. I have also built relationships with people that started online and then led to some sort of in-person interaction like at a conference or a trade show or a mastermind meeting or something like that. And then meeting them in person really reinforces that relationship in a way that's really hard to do in just a virtual environment alone. When you meet people in real life and you can shake their hand or touch their shoulder and they become a tangible real person as opposed to just this, like how you're viewing me right now, it's much more deeper and like our minds remember that. And so when we see a picture or a video of someone that we know that we've met in person, we remember that connection to that person. And there's just some real value in having that fidelity. So if you're in a 100% remote environment, it's more difficult to build that. I encourage you to figure out how to have team meetups in person at some point, maybe once a year, twice a year at conferences or at headquarters or things like that, or try to find ways to connect with some of the people individually, one-to-one, -one. travel to their city, have them travel to yours, meet them somewhere where you're both going to vacation. If you cannot meet with people in person and it's only virtual, only remote, spend more time with them in between sections, right? So after a Zoom is over, hang out for a few minutes and just catch up or have quick huddles where you just jump online and chat for five, 10 minutes, send audio clips back and forth or send little loom videos, just quick little videos back and forth to each other that are more social. It's all about building this connection because at the end of the day, we're very good at our jobs, but we have to build these relationships in order to move to the next level. And it's important that you learn how to build those relationships, even if you're not able to do it in person. So find ways to build these levels of connection with people, whether you can do it in person or if you only can do it remotely. I hope this was helpful to you. I encourage you to go out and build deep connections with people, even if it's difficult for you to do that. I recommend that you give it a try. It's going to help your career tremendously. So with that, I'll see you in the next one.